Supporting Super Earth through buying war bonds ain't only patriotic. It's also mandated by high command. If you don't want to be taken out back and retired, you'll want to invest those hard-fought super credits into war bonds for more gear, weapons, and of course, to look good while you dive into hell. My name is Commissar Kai, and today I'll be guiding y'all through the entire collection of war bonds so you know where to best invest in freedom. This ain't really a tier list, but certain pieces of kit, be it weapons, boosters, or armor passives, can really open up a whole new world of possibilities. So invest today and show those bots and bugs just how much ordnance a strong economy can afford to throw it problems. So let's get into it. For the sake of my sanity and for not making this video an hour long, we're going to be largely ignoring emotes, victory poses, and cards. Instead, we're going to focus on the weapons, boosters, and armor passives that can really make a difference on the battlefield. Some of these weapons, like stun grenades or the grenade pistol, provide crucial utility in a loadout that is otherwise completely unavailable. Others are more side grades or for style points, which is also important. But if they don't open up new possibilities for loadouts, they will rank lower on the list. For example, the tenderizer is an incredible assault rifle, but it does not unlock new loadouts or new weapons to play. So that would make its war bond fall a bit lower in the rankings. Starting out our list, we got number seven, Freedom's Flame. Now hold on a second before y'all try and court-martial me with the senator's approval. Let me explain. Just because I'm ranking this last does not mean that it's a bad war bond. It's just too focused on fire to be one of the first war bonds that you buy. Being able to cook up chargers with the torture or crisper is nice, but given how many methods we have for sending chargers to the great E710 farm in the sky, it's just not a high priority war bond. That said, the cookout shotgun is an incredible weapon, coming with heaps of stagger and the ability to set enemies on fire. With these qualities, it cuts through hordes like a hot knife through butter, but we can access weapons with similar roles in other war bonds with more utility. The Flam 66 Torture is a powerful flamer for a primary weapon, coming with level 4 medium penetration, which lets you quickly melt through hordes of chaff, but its utility is a bit limited. You can do some work with it against the bots, but largely this one should stay on the bug front. The crisper's kinda in the same boat. It is a solid sidearm, especially against the bugs, but I couldn't really think of a situation where it adds enough utility to be worth picking up the war bond. Now, Firebomb Hellpods is hilarious, but after extensive testing, it just doesn't seem to do enough damage, even when you mesh it together with other things like the EAT or HMG emplacement to get more fire hell pods called in. It also has the unfortunate effect of setting your teammates on fire, which is less than desirable unless you're playing with friends. The unique armor passive, Inflammable, which for some reason means very easy to set on fire, makes no sense to me, but I ain't never been one for book learning, makes you 75% less vulnerable to fire damage. This can come in real handy on plants with fire tornadoes, or if you're running something like a flamethrower where you're accidentally going to set yourself on fire. But it is a bit more niche than running other armor options. It does look incredibly stylish, though, so it does get some points for that. Overall, I give this war bond 5 out of 10 fire safety officers. Good at what it does, but remains more of a niche choice. Coming in at number 6, we got the Polar Patriots War Bond. Side grade is the first word that comes to mind when describing this war bond. It comes with four weapons, a booster, and a couple of armor sets. The weapons are generally good, but they lack a sense of identity. There's no weapon or grenade in this war bond that really enables a new style of play, but instead it offers alternatives to other existing weapons. For example, the Tenderizer comes with 95 damage, which is the highest of any assault rifle, light armor pin, and a 35 round magazine. It's also laser accurate, so you can be sure that your bullets are going exactly where freedom demands. Its light armor pin does mean that you'll need to bring a support weapon with a bit more punch, but it's a solid alternative to the base liberator. The pummeler is an interesting little SMG with insanely high stagger and a low rate of fire. This does give it a niche for shooting hunters out of the air or making a stalker stick in place while your team turns them to paste. But the liberator concussive kind of outshines his weapon now that it comes with a drum magazine. But if you want a one-handed weapon that can stun lock enemies to death, the pummeler's a good choice. The purifier is in a bit of a weird spot. Its windup makes it tough to use on bugs, but its medium armor pin and insanely high stagger do give it some uses against brood commanders and bile spewers. It's alright at dealing with hunter packs, but if they get up in your face, it's basically useless due to its charge up and explosive AoE. It's a bit better on the bot front due to its explosive damage wreaking some havoc on devastators, but it does struggle to deal with combat striders since their robo junk is immune to explosive damage, which is a large part of the purifier's damage. The 
verdict is a hard-hitting sidearm with 10 rounds per magazine and 8 reserve mags, giving it a lot of ammo and stopping power. But compared to the medium penetration Senator, the hard-hitting Bushwhacker, or the explosive grenade pistol, it does tend to lag a bit behind other options. At the end of the day, it's just another gun. Polar Patriots also comes with incendiary impact grenades, which are especially good on the bug front for instantly deleting those packs of hunters. But since there's an incendiary grenade further up the list, I can't really consider this as a huge selling point of the war bond. The armor sets in Polar Patriots are a bit of a variety pack. It has a light scout armor, which is less detection range and a bigger radar, servo assisted medium armor for longer throwing range and more limb health, which does help a lot in this new patch, and a fortified heavy armor. But you can get two of these three in the Helldivers Mobilized Base War Bond, with the servo assisted being available in a much, much more useful war bond. Polar Patriot's booster, Motivational Shocks, is dang near useless. When you get slowed, this booster will give your Helldiver a zap in the butt, which will get rid of the slow effect. However, this has a short cooldown before it can be applied again, and the situations that will trigger it are rather uncommon, those being like stun grenades, hunter poison, bile slow, and maybe a few others. Not much more to say about this particular war bond, pretty underwhelming overall. I'll also give it 5 out of 10 Patriots. Swiftly moving on, we got number 5, Chemical Agents. The newest war bond is the first one on this list that offers us a couple of different tools which really open up some new loadouts. The Sterilizer, Dog's Breath, Guard Dog, and the new Gas Grenades all give you access to gas effects outside of the Orbital Gas Strike, which is not available anywhere else in the game. The Sterilizer is a bit of a niche support weapon. You might think it's an alternative to the Flamethrower, but it's really more of a mix of the Arc Thrower and flamethrower with extremely low damage. But don't be mistaken, the low damage does not mean this weapon is useless. Spraying down a horde of bugs with Democracy's Bug Spray gets them all confused and slowed, making them clump up and bonk into each other instead of trying to eat you. This makes it into more of a true support weapon, relying on follow-up like Eagle Napalm Strikes or using your team when you're being a frontliner. The Dog's Breath is a bit of a unique stratagem in that it gives you access to the same confuse effect as the Sterilizer, but the drone will stick to a single target until it dies before moving on to the next one. This weirdly makes it more of a distraction tool rather than a personal defense weapon, as the guard dog will stick on the target until it dies rather than spraying whatever's near you. I'm not a huge fan of it, but if you want a guard dog to chase down bugs, spraying them in the face like they're a misbehaving cat, then it'll get the job done. The gas grenades are a bit of a different story and are really the standout option in this war bond. Unlike the Sterilizer and Dog's Breath, this grenade leaves gas clouds, which have the same effect, but will linger in an area, affecting any target that enters it, barring Bile Titans, Tanks, and Factory Striders. Since this can even work on bigger enemies, and since the Confuse effect makes targets attack whatever's near them, this gives it a ton of utility when you add it to a kit. It does good work on both bots and bugs since it basically lets you set up a wall that the enemy can't really get past while slowly strangling the life out of those filthy Xenos. Finally, we have the biggest disappointment in a war bond to date, at least for me. The Stem Pistol. This weapon comes with 30 miniature stems loaded into a modified Senator. In theory, you can stem up your friends when they're low and it does have a lot of ammo but in practice, it just doesn't work like you'd expect. The stems only heal for about 50% and do not give you stamina back and are incredibly hard to land on a moving target. Since the game is so lethal right now, you are much more likely to be instantly killed than to suffer an injury, making the pocket medic a bit of a disappointment. The armor sets give you the unique passive, Advanced Filtration which lets you wander around your gas clouds taking 80% reduced gas damage. Since the gas don't do a ton of damage anyway, this effectively lets you move freely through the gas clouds to deliver righteous judgment to these blind and confused animals. I'll give this one 6 out of 10 bean curry since it does give you some new tools we can use on either the bot or the bug fronts that we really can't get anywhere else. Coming in at number 4, we got Viper Commandos. The Jungle Fighters of the Helldiver Corps, the Viper Commandos Warbond comes with some pretty interesting weapons, a very powerful armor passive, and one of the best boosters available to Helldivers everywhere. This one's a little lighter on the weaponry, coming only with the Liberator Carbine, Bushwhacker Pocket Shoddy, and the Throwing Knife. The Liberator C is just your base Liberator with a higher rate of fire and a wider spread for close quarters engagements. This weapon's okay at clearing out chaff and is a great panic button, but but its extremely high rate of fire will drain your mags in a hurry. Due to its light penetration, it's not very good on the bot front, so keep it on bugs and mostly use it against hunters. The bushwhack 
Whacker is a triple barreled shotgun that functions as a sidearm. It has the same damage profile as the base Punisher, but because it's a sawn off shotgun, it's wildly inaccurate past about 10 meters. It does have a ton of stagger, which makes it a great anti-stalker weapon. You can also switch it to fire all three barrels at once, which is about 1200 damage straight to the face of whatever freedom hating jerk is crowding your personal space. It's especially good at shooting down shriekers and giving all three barrels to a charger's leg once it's been stripped to armor. All these qualities make it an incredible sidearm that you will find yourself reaching for when you bring the kit without enough stagger, or if you need an answer for shriekers. Last and certainly least, we have the throwing knife. While this is one of the cooler weapons available to hell divers across the fleet, it just don't measure up to other grenade options. It's completely silent when thrown, so if you enjoy stealth gameplay, it does have a role in that playstyle for taking out stationary guards without alerting anything nearby. But until command lets me manually jam it into the eye of a bile spewer, I'll be leaving it on the ship. These weapons are pretty underwhelming for me, but the real reason Viper Commandos is ranked higher on the list is because of its booster and armor passives. The booster, Experimental Infusions, makes you and your team stems supercharged giving you a speed boost and damage reduction buff whenever you use your stem. This is an incredibly powerful effect, letting you quickly get out of danger and tank a few extra hits before going down. Absolutely top tier booster and makes the Warbond almost worth it on its own. But in addition, you get access to the Peak Physique Armor Passive, which gives you greater control over your weapons and increased melee damage. If you like toting around the big guns like Eruptor, Dominator, or any of the machine guns, the increased weapon handling is very noticeable and makes those weapons a lot easier to use. The melee damage is a nice bonus, but it's not really going to come into play much. It's really nice for hitting hunters out of their jump, but other than that, it's kind of take it or leave it. You're really taking it for the other part of the passive. Overall, I give this one 7 out of 10 buff divers. It comes with some great utility in the booster and armor passives, and the weapons are each serviceable, with the bushwhacker being a real standout sidearm. Before we get into the top three, if you like supporting democracy through buying war bonds, then consider liking the video. That one click is the best way to support the channel and manage democracy by spreading the word of cooperation and team play to the rest of the fleet. To see more content like this, subscribe to the channel for a new video every week. Coming up, I'll be showing y'all a couple of new synergies to use on those 10 tyrants. If you find yourself lacking for squad mates, enlist in my platoon by joining the Discord linked in the description below. My commandos are the most active hell divers in the fleet, and we all love working together and making new friends. But now, a word from our super newbies. Oh, I think there's a strategy jam out there. No! Oh, he fell I'm in the hole! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord! That was so tragic. All right, I got another one for y'all. Go get him. Yeah. Oh, Don't shoot him. Beat his ass. Beat, him beat his ass. Oh, I'm Go. sorry. Oh, Jesus. He just punched me in the face. Breeze flies here. All right, so that means right, we're going to have to like, move. Did you just tell him he's adopted? Yeah. <laughs> we have fun in the platoon. Now on to number three. Cutting edge. Finally, we're starting to get into the real good stuff. From here on, each of these war bonds is pretty dang important for filling out a lot of different loadouts or giving you access to some really powerful weapons. This war bond comes with three incredible weapons, the Sickle, Arc Blitzer, and Plasma Punisher. The Sickle's great on bots and bugs, while the Arc Blitzer's better on bugs and the Plasma Punisher's better on bots. So regardless of what faction you like fighting the most, this war bond will give you a solid primary to lean on. The Sickle's basically an assault rifle with a small wind-up time and potentially infinite ammo. This weapon uses heat sinks rather than bullets, which means that if you manage your shots well and avoid overheating, you will never need to worry about running out of ammo. Its damage is on the lower side, but it does have a very high rate of fire and a great deal of accuracy at short to medium range. It only has light penetration, so on bots be sure to aim for weak points and take something to deal with combat striders, because otherwise you'll just be giving the bots a light show. The Arc Blitzer is another infinite ammo weapon, but instead of heat sinks, it just requires you to pump the gun with each shot. It does great damage to both medium and lightly armored enemies, but the main reason to reach for the Arc Blitzer is its utility as a stagger machine and its infinite ammo. It's easy to keep enemies pinned inside of a Napalm Strike or an Orbital Gatlin Strike by repeatedly knocking them back with the Light of Liberty. This is probably the single best primary weapon on the bug front, so don't be fooled by any dissidents saying it's a C-tier weapon. The Plasma Punisher is a similar style of weapon, but works a bit differently. It does use ammunition, but it comes with added explosive damage and a pretty big AoE in addition to the crazy stagger of the Arc Blitzer. This 
This is probably one of the best primaries against the bots, since it can stagger lock groups of devastators all while beating them down with the big AoE and explosive damage. This ain't even mentioning how it destroys groups of little bots with the miniature exploding suns. Some people swear by this weapon on bugs, but I found that much like the purifier, it's tough to use when hunters are jumping at your face. And weirdly, the stagger can work against it by knocking around groups of hive guard and brood commanders away from the blast. Feels a little clumsy on bugs, but it slaps hard on the bots. Finally, cutting edge comes the Laz 5 Dagger Sidearm. This is a beam weapon that does moderate damage, but again uses heat sinks, so if you manage it right, it'll never run out of ammo. You can also set enemies on fire, and since it's a one-handed sidearm, you can do this while on the run. Overall, this is actually one of the better sidearms in the game against the bots, since it has no recoil and is great against berserkers and smaller bots. It's decent against the bugs, but I usually prefer other options. Stun grenades used to be the best grenades in the game, but now they're a bit more situational. They work great for setting up huge kills streaks by stunning enemies and chunking some heavy ordnance at the problem. But it's not as important as it used to be since we have other methods of crowd control in the game. See the beastly new arc thrower and gas grenades. Still, they are very powerful grenades and open a lot of doors for certain support weapons like the grenade launcher. But since the gas grenades perform a similar duty and thermites are just so insanely strong right now, it does make these grenades a bit more situational rather than the absolute must first buy for a war bond. The booster and cutting edge is useless. Don't bring it. Localization confused Fusion increases the time between bug breaches and bot drops, but it's not by a significant amount, about 30 seconds to a minute, and you will be much better served by taking almost anything else. The armor passive, Electrical Conduit, reduces arc damage you take by 95%, which is a lot, but given that right now... It's only really going to matter when you're getting shocked by a friendly lightning. It's just too niche to be good. But if you're in a squad full of bug zappers, it can do all right. I'd give this one a solid 8 out of 10 edgelords. It's a good war bond. Coming in at second place, we have Steeled Veterans, or as I like to think of them, Veteran Helldivers. It's hard to keep all your parts when you're spreading this much freedom. All the weapons in this war bond are amazing now, either for their raw damage or the utility they can bring to a loadout. So let's quickly go through them. First off, we got the Incendiary Breaker, the classic horde clear weapon for bugs. It's a drum fed incendiary shotgun with high damage and a high rate of fire. It only comes with five mags in total, so you will need to ease off the trigger a bit unless you bring a supply pack. But its insane DPS mixed with the powerful burning effect makes it the best weapon in the game against hunters. It's pretty much useless on the bot front, but it is such a standout weapon on bugs, especially for newer players, that it helps bump up this war bond on the list. The Dominator is a hard-hitting, medium-penetrating stagger machine. One shot from this beast will stagger anything smaller than a Hulk or a Charger, and it's medium Medium pen makes it amazing at clearing out those tougher patrols on higher difficulties. Because it has explosive damage, it's also good at popping charger butts or blasting the arms off of devastators. If you want a big gun that hits hard, you can't go wrong with the bolter. I mean Dominator on either the bugs or the bots. Finally, for the primary weapons, we have the vastly improved Liberator Concussive. It's only got half the rate of fire of the base Liberator and slightly less damage, but it makes up for it with a 60-round drum-fed magazine coming with seven magazines in total. For those of you like me that are bad at math, this is... A lot of concussive bullets to be thrown down range. And since it doesn't just stagger, but pushes enemies back, it's great for keeping socialist animals in your status effects or saving your teammates from packs of enemies closing in on them. If you like laying on the trigger, then this is the primary for you. It's not as good against bots, but it fills an interesting niche against bugs for a primary weapon. For a sidearm, we have my favorite in the whole armory, the Senator. This medium penetration revolver is exactly what I want in a sidearm. Hard hitting, accurate at close range, and medium penetration to finish off those brood commanders or combat striders. It's real hard to leave this one at home since it's great against both bots and bugs and is one of three sidearms with medium penetration and the only one that shoots an actual bullet, the other two being the crisper and grenade pistol. Great addition to the war bond. You also get access to incendiary grenades, which can be okay against bots, but are great against bugs. Unlike the impact version, these grenades can be cooked to explode above the area you want to set on fire, or throw in front of a swarm to detonate in the middle of a big pack. They're also great at closing bug holes, being very easy to sink one in without risking wasting a grenade. The armor passive for steel veterans is servo assisted, which gives you extra throwing range, which applies to both grenades and stratagems, and extra limb health, which in the last update makes it a lot better than it used to be. This isn't a make or break passive that you must have, but it is powerful, especially if you can be accurate with your stratagem tosses. Almost everything in this war bond is either good or amazing, with one very notable exception, the booster. Flexible reinforcement budget reduces the amount of time it takes for you to gain new reinforcements after they've run out, which relies on you dying all the time, making it one of the most useless pieces of g- Excuse me. It is less than a stellar option for boosters. 
Because all the weapons and armor passes are great and only the boosters a stinker, I'll give this one 9 out of 10 not service related medical claims. Finally, we arrive at the best war bond in the entire game and the one you should absolutely pick up first, Democratic Detonation. Now you might be asking yourself, why is this the war bond to pick up? I'd prefer to get something shinier, go play with my fire. Well knock it off cadet, thinking is for your superiors. Do you want to run the new gas grenades to role play as the galaxy's best exterminator? Well you better grab Democratic Detonation first since otherwise you'll be SOL on closing bug holes. Want access to the undisputed best primary in the game? Grab your crossbow and go snipe out five devastators with three shots to remind them of just how inferior they are to humanity in our 2600 year old technology. Or maybe you want to roll the dice with every trigger pull and bring a rocket propelled grenade launcher for a primary weapon and fire G6 frag grenades with every shot. Whatever you need in a loadout is in this war bond. So let's go over the main selling points. First off, we got to talk about the elephant in the room, the thermite grenade. Just this grenade opens so many doors when it comes to loadout since it lets you deal with any heavy enemy with just one to two grenades. This frees up your primary, secondary, support weapons and stratagems for other uses since you can walk with confidence into any war zone, find the biggest and baddest freedom hating lunatic out there, stick one of these on their nose and walk away comfortable in the knowledge that they are about to meet Lady Liberty. In addition to freedom's heat and blanket, we also have the best primary in the game right now, the explosive crossbow. This thing was handcrafted by General Brash himself for quickly convincing anyone opposing Liberty that they belong in our gas tank. Seriously y'all, it does 620 damage with most of that being explosive in a large AOE around the target. It slaps harder than anything else in the arsenal and on top of that it can clear bug holes and fabricators from a distance. Honestly, this one probably needs a nerf. I mean, it's a flawless weapon and you should use it. Moving on. Next up, we have the Eruptor, which like I mentioned earlier, shoots G6 frag grenades at anything that needs killing. Each shot does a good bit of explosive damage, but the shrapnel will shred anything wearing light armor. It can even one-tap bile spears if you position the shell right. It's good against bots and bugs, and like the explosive crossbow, it can also close bug holes and destroy fabricators from up to 150 meters away. Overall, this is just a fantastic weapon that'll serve you and your squad well. Just be aware that the shrapnel cannot pierce through medium armored enemies, but it can pierce through you. The Adjudicator is a good weapon, especially for an assault rifle. It has pretty high damage and medium penetration. It also comes with a healthy amount of ammunition at 8 total magazines. The only real downside to this weapon is the recoil because it kicks like a mule. But if you like your AK styled assault rifles, this one's going to fit the bill nicely. Finally for the weapons, we have the grenade pistol. If you ever need to stagger a heavy devastator before he saws you in half or pop a bile spear pack farting their nonsense into the atmosphere, then the grenade pistol's got you covered. Being able to close bug holes with the sidearm is a real game changer though and completely opens up your grenade slot for other options like stuns, thermites, and gas grenades, which is why I say you get this first. For armor sets, Democratic Detonation has your back, with both a light and medium engineering kit armor to bring more thermites, I mean grenades, to the battlefield. It also helps that they look amazing, especially with the new helmet options. If you thought there must be something in this war bond that's bad, don't worry, you're right. Expert Extraction Pilot is a terrible booster, reducing the amount of time you have to wait for Pelican 1 to touch down. Maybe that sounds good to you, and if it does, let me remind you that having a booster that only affects the end of the mission is completely freaking useless. Don't take it. Hell, don't even buy it. Save your medals for something else. It should come as no surprise that I give this war bond 10 out of 10 warheads on foreheads. It is the absolute best war bond in the game, and it's not even close. So pick this one up first if you're in the market for support and manage democracy. I hope this gives y'all a good idea where to spend your hard-earned super credits. Next time we'll be looking at some new synergies on the bot front, so if you have any favorites, leave them in the comments. But until next time, this is Commissar Kai, signing out.